Hello and welcome to the Greenfoot tutorial videos. My name is Michael Kölling and I will um, talk today about how to um, start a new scenario in Greenfoot. Just opening up Greenfoot here. So in some sense this is the beginning of, of a new scenario. It is probably not the beginning um, in the sense f uh, for a new beginner with, th with Greenfoot in the sense that the very first interactions with Greenfoot probably should be to take an existing scenario and play with an existing scenario, make some modifications to it ext and extend it. Um, but if you want to make your entirely new own scenario then this is the beginning um, and I'll just show you the basics um, in this video and we'll do some more steps in, in following videos. So here I've got Greenfoot open on my screen and no scenarios open at all. I've got an empty gray screen. I choose new scenario I give it a name, I call it bug because I'll do something with a bug today, so i um, create a new scenario and what I'm getting here is um, a scenario that has the two um, super classes in there that we have seen earlier in all other scenarios, there's the world and the actor classes, they are both abstract classes which means they don't do anything on their own. I have to now create my own world and my own actors. I can create my own world by clicking on this and, and selecting new subclass and here I'm now creating um, the world for my particular scenario. And in this case I want to make a bug run around on a wall so I name my uh, my world wall because that's where all my action happens. Um, you notice that this is striped. If the class appears striped like this it means it hasn't been compiled since it was last changed so I can compile this by clicking the compile all button and you notice immediately I get a world um, uh, here shown in my window. The world is fairly small and white uh, we can see why this happens if we open the editor for the world class here and the editor um, is a definition of my existing world. There's a comment on top that tells me what these numbers mean this means I have a world that is 20 cells wide and 20 cells high where each cell is 10 by 10 pixels. So the 10 by 10 pixel cells is fine for me, I'll leave that, but I make that a bit bigger so I make that, oh, let's say, uh, this wide and that high 80 by 60 cells. I can close this and compile it and see my world is now it's a bit too big so I go in again make that a bit smaller maybe 60 by 40 is a bit better and compile that again okay that's a reasonable size for my world um, the next thing is the background of my world object well what is behind here is that as soon as the world subclass here my wall compiles Greenfoot will automatically create an instance of that world and show it here in the main part of the window um, I can now go here and set an image for the world that will set the background image for the world. Um, in this dialog um, we have three parts. On the left are all the images that have already been included in the scenario and at the moment there are none because I haven't built anything, uh, d uh, done anything with any images yet. And then here is an image library for me to use. Um, I can click on the different categories here and I will see different images that I can use. If you have your own Im images somewhere in your file system, you can also use this browse button. Go to your file system and find other images that are not in the Greenfoot library. I will not do that. I cancel this at the moment. But if you do, those images will automatically be copied over here into the Greenfoot scenario and will be used. Um, for the world background, of course, the backgrounds is um, the most interesting category for us at the moment. I want a wall so here's a a brick pattern and I use this. Let's see what it looks like. Um, I have to compile this so that this um, gets now b displayed and here's a nice brick wall now. Um, this wall in fact is a bit too dark for me because I want to have a red ladybug on there and that doesn't give a nice contrast so I change that again. I say set image and look at the backgrounds. Uh, here's some other brick patterns. Here's a light one so I use this, compile this and look at it. Yeah, This is now a white painted wall that's much nicer. It gives me a slightly more neutral background. And so that's all I have to do with my world. So to sum up, one thing I did 
is specify the size and the next thing I did is specify the image. Um, now that my world is prepared I can create an actor to put into the world and I do that by clicking on the actor class and create a subclass using the new subclass function here for the actor. If I create a new subclass um, I give this actor a name and select an image for the actor. Um, let's call it bug um, and let's try to see whether we find a an image there are animals for this bug. Um, there's an image of a ladybug. That's fine. So I click OK. And again this class appears striped at first. It hasn't been compiled. I compile this again. Now the stripes have gone. The class has been compiled. Here's my wall. And now I can right click this and create a bug instance. And there we are. And of course now if we run this it doesn't do anything yet. And that is because if we look at the code, if I open the editor the act method itself is empty. There's no code in here, so it doesn't do anything yet. But that is that we will cover the first actions in a different video. For now, I'm happy enough that I can create actors and place them in the world. So I now have the starting point for implementing a new scenario. And that is it for today.